All right, everyone, let's start things off today. Good morning, and thank you for waking up with Wesley. I'm senior meteorologist Wesley Williams here in the WLOX studios here on the Bees Road in Biloxi. It's the final day of January. Feels like, it's been, feels like it's been a long month, perhaps, but tomorrow is a new month, February. And what a nice day it's going to be tomorrow. But today we have started off with some wet weather and we're talking about how much rain we've seen so far today. We'll get to those rain totals. We're also gonna take a look at some of the wind gust reports because when some of the rain moved in, it was a little gusty. And we'll take a look at the future cast to see when the rain chances are finally going to dwindle. And uh, looks like it will be later today as we start to turn drier, heading into a dry weekend. So we'll get right to that weather information for you as we start off your Friday digital desk update. So let's get right to the information. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hope that you're having a great Friday so far. It's been pretty active here, a big day uh, on our GMM team. So you might hear some chatter in the newsroom as uh, it's a pretty lively morning here. Uh, first off, we'll start off with the time lapse. This is Gulfport. We had some fog during the five o'clock hour. Then the fog was cleared out around six in the morning as rain showers, kind of some gusty rain showers moved in. As of the current hour, eight in the morning, still seeing some clouds. We've got another timing lapse for you. This is over in Biloxi. And we can see uh, in Biloxi at the Borvage, uh, it was foggy and then it turned rainy and uh, now we're just dealing with some clouds. One last time lapse for you, also in Biloxi at the IP Casino. Started foggy at five, some rain during the six o'clock hour and the gusty showers kind of pushed the fog away as we went through the seven o'clock hour and currently in the eight o'clock hour, that's Biloxi at the IP. So all in all, a uh, pretty active morning weather-wise and some of those gusty winds uh, were reported in parts of the area. This is a look at the wind gust reports so far today in select areas along the middle Gulf Coast. And um, some of us had kind of a gusty shower pass through, like maybe near New Orleans. The wind gusts were between 20 and 30. Um, we also saw a gusty shower passing through Gulfport where the wind speeds gusted to 30 miles per hour. Anytime you see that northwest wind or that north wind, likely means it came from a thunderstorm. When you see these south winds, it's not really from a, a thunderstorm or a shower. It's just because we had a, a breezy night overnight for the most part. So that's Slidell and Picayune showing that. Also Biloxi showing some breezy winds out of the south um, as well as Moss Point. But it uh, looks like a gusty shower did pass over Mobile and um, they had that wind gust clocked at 31 miles per hour. So. Did you all see some of those gusty winds? If, by the way, some of you are watching this on some of our streaming services, and some of you are watching this video live on YouTube, where you can actually interact and comment, and I've got a screen over here pulled up with some of your comments, so I can give a shout out to some of you, um, like Jerry and Ruth. Good morning, Jerry and Ruth, if you're watching. Thanks for watching on the YouTube version of this, where you can kind of live chat with me a little bit. I'll briefly look over there if there's some questions or comments. Uh, we've got about seven, six, seven more minutes left, so we'll kind of get right down to business as we get to the rest of the video. So we're talking about rain totals here. How much rain did we see? Well, most of those colors are green, so most of the rain amounts probably around or less than a half inch. We can get a total for Poplarville, three-tenths of an inch. In the Wiggins area, around a quarter inch of rain. Picayune. Let's see if we can get one of those. Looks like about a tenth of an inch. Uh, in the Gulfport Biloxi area, you'll note, uh, look how, if I circle this on the screen, there were some areas south of I-10 in Harrison County that frankly just didn't get that much rain at all. Um, so not able to really uh, tap those when there's a blank on the map. But if I tap one of the green spots, it might say 0.1 maybe. But yeah, didn't really get a bunch of rain in the area. I'm trying to tap the map and see if it'll pop up any totals for me. There's a two tenths of an inch, so sure. Looks like we're not really getting, okay, Hurley got three tenths. Loosedale got around two tenths, so yeah. Looks like most spots about a quarter of an inch to a half inch of rain. And um, those rain totals will continue to come in as we continue to track some of these showers moving through. 
Now, as far as what's happening now, as of 834 AM, most of the rain's gone. We can take a look at this radar map and see that um, if I circle where most of the, you know, substantial rain is, it's basically already to the east of Mobile and it's moving eastward uh, toward um, Baldwin County, Alabama. So that's where most of the rain is going. And it, you know, to the untrained eye, you're looking at that moving over the Alabama line and you're like, all right, we're done. It's not going to rain ever again for the rest of the day. And it's not really that simple. There's a little bit more complexity to it. As you can see, the radar is detecting some rain activity behind that. Uh, right now, it looks like those showers very close to Waveland Bay, St. Louis, Diamond Head, and they've just moved east of Poplarville. It's really light stuff, almost like a little rain spritz or rain sprinkle. And those are going to continue to move toward the east. So that's why the rain chances for the rest of the day are not quite at 0% just yet. We are waiting on a cold front to come through and sweep all of this wet weather out. So the bigger picture of the first alert radar, you can see there are some radar returns still west of us over Louisiana. You can see this activity back here that hasn't quite yet made it through, but could still try to move through during the rest of this morning. Once we get to noon, the cold front hits us and uh, that the cold front at this point in time likely located back here, if I just kind of crudely draw that on the map. And so once that cold front uh, moves eastward across the area like that, that's what's going to unlock drier weather as we go to the rest of the day. And um, here's a look at the future cast, which shows that front still back to the west during the next hour or so. And then it gets over our six southernmost counties about the noon time frame into the afternoon. This will be that time frame between noon and 3 p.m. If you are standing outside, you will notice that change in the air. We're going to see a wind direction shift instead of seeing winds from the south uh, like we have been seeing ahead of the front, which is a pretty moist wind. It's off the Gulf. We're going to begin to see a dry wind coming in from the north and west behind the front, and that will help to drop the humidity. But Getting a little sciencey here, we know in, in the science of weather that temperatures heat and cool, the rate that a temperature can heat and cool actually depends on how much moisture is in the air. And if there's a really moist environment, temperatures actually don't move that much. So on a day when there's rain, you're, you might not get a, you know, while it's raining, the temperature might not change unless there's literally a cold front. But on a day when there's a bunch of drier conditions, um, like what we're going to see later today, temperatures actually can change quite a bit. They can get warmer during the afternoons and they can get cooler during the mornings. So that's what we're going to find as we go to this afternoon. I think there's an opportunity for temperatures to spike or rise sharply. And maybe some spots could get into the mid 70s. I hope nobody hits 80. We're not forecasting 80, but we are forecasting 70s this afternoon. And it would not surprise me with a warm south, warm and dry southwest wind, uh, um, along with some peaks of sunshine. Those types of ingredients could allow for a sharp rise in temperature. But I think this evening looks pretty nice. We should get some breaks in the clouds to allow for uh, hopefully a nice sunset view. But there's a look at the forecast for today. We have those showers hanging out in the area this morning, and then we'll see drying conditions during the PM hours. My range of high temperatures today, ranging from the upper 60s to the mid 70s, you know, maybe there's a little small percentage chance that some one or two locations makes a run for the upper 70s, close to 80. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully it's as I forecast and no one goes to 80, but it's, it's very difficult to forecast with a lot of precision the exact magnitude of a temperature spike or a sharp rise in temperature. So I'm just going for mid 70s, but depending on where you are, it could uh, vary. If you have our first alert weather app and you download that, uh, to your mobile device, you'll see that hour by hour forecast, which shows, um, you know, some rain chances for you this morning. We'll kind of blow that up on the screen so we can walk through it. You do have that 50 to 40% chance for the next few hours, drops to a 30% chance around the middle of the day. So if you have some lunch plans on Friday, you might not have to worry too much about rain. Uh, you'll feel the dry, low humidity by this afternoon. The rain chances are continuing to dwindle. 
And look at the temperatures, 70s around 3 or 4 in the afternoon, but then dropping to only 60 by later this evening once the sun goes down. You might also even get some 50s as we go to later this evening and tonight. So, uh, you know, if you have some Friday evening, Friday night plans, it will turn cooler with some 50s possible. Uh, and depending on where you are, we'll get some overnight temperatures in the 40s, maybe even mid 40s. Places on the coast like Ocean Springs and um, Bay St. Louis, maybe you'll be at 47 by Saturday morning. But places that are inland like The Kill and Van Cleve and Perkinston, north of I-10, uh, you might get to the mid 40s by Saturday morning. And then finally putting it all together in our seven day forecast. It looks like a really nice weekend for your Groundhog Day weekend. Uh, we've got Saturday, February 1st and Sunday, February 2nd, Groundhog Day Sunday. And um, I mean, you really can't ask for much better. Yes, the mornings are going to be chilly with 40s on Saturday morning, 40s on Sunday morning. Uh, but the afternoons, when you factor in that there's going to be some sunshine on Saturday and Sunday, no rain, and you're looking at temperatures in the upper, set, upper 60s, which is slightly above normal for January, but frankly, it's pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, I would certainly make plans to be out and about spending some time outside this weekend to enjoy those conditions. Um, literally, I have plans. Uh, so maybe follow my example and even if it's just for a few hours maybe spend some time outside for a few hours because you know we don't always have nice weather last week we were freezing next week looks like it's going to be kind of mild and muggy so this weekend really seize the day or the days and uh, as they say carpe diem or maybe carpe diems <laughs> or however that would pluralize so thank you for, so much for waking up with wesley today i've been senior meteorologist wesley williams i hope that you have a wonderful weekend I'm going to head out now and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Take care.